All right. <laughs> Welcome to Draft Therapy Live. Hopefully this is streaming because as always with these things, you never know what's going to happen. Looks like I'm, I'm live now. Uh, if you can, somebody can just give me a heads up in the chat just to make sure you can hear me, that everything's going well. I'm going to give it a second because I don't want to start and get into this whole thing. If, if, if nobody can hear me, that'd be kind of pointless, wouldn't it? So somebody just give me a shout in the chat. All right, good. You can hear me. So it's going to be a few seconds delay. So this is Draft Therapy Live for Friday, uh, February 8th. And today I have a little bit different of a of a kind of beer special. Usually what I do, obviously, you guys watch the channel enough, you know I do Michigan beer reviews. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm doing um, uh, beers of Florida, kind of over, over you know, um, overview, an ovary, so to speak. So I was in Florida last uh, last month, and I picked up a wide, pretty wide variety of beer. I get, didn't get a chance to try them all. I didn't get a chance to try most of them, to be honest. So I brought them home, and what I plan on doing is... What I want, hey, how you doing? So what I want to do is I want to kind of try out each of these beers. I'm not going to finish them unless I think that they're really pretty good. But I'm going to bring them all out, and I'll show you what I got. I'll tell you what I got here. So uh, first up, let's get right into it. This is Brew Bus out of Tampa, Florida. This is a, it says, you're my boy, Blue. It's a blueberry wheat ale. Some of these... If you didn't know, I use a green screen, so some of these are going to look kind of weird because they have green in the label. This one in particular is, this is J-Dubs Brewing Company uh, out of someplace in Florida, T uh, Sarasota, Florida. So that one's going to look really weird because you're going to be able to see some weirdness on there. Uh, all these beers, just to kind of give a, a preface, I didn't get like Cigar City. Obviously, Cigar City is probably one of the biggest breweries in Florida. I didn't go that route. I just decided to get smaller breweries because I wanted to try these different things that I haven't had before. Uh, I've had a lot of Cigar City stuff in the past. I've had Miami Brewing Company stuff in the past. Uh, I've had a few other things. Not a whole lot. I go down to Florida a couple times a year. Uh, this one next is Two Henry's Brewing Company uh, out of Clearwater, Florida. It's a blueberry vanilla wheat. And let's go for another one. Darwin... Brewing Company, circa 1926 Tangerine Wheat Ale. They are out of Bradenton, Florida, which is where the Pittsburgh Pirates minor league team is. Uh, next, we have Infinite Ale Works Raspberry Whitfinet. Whitfinet. Easy for me to say. Belgian-style wit beer. This is out of Ocala, Florida. I think I, I'm not going to have a wide enough uh, area here. Whoa. Okay, so then I have another J-Dubs out of Sarasota. This is Bell Cow Milk Chocolate Porter. That sounded really good to me at the time. Uh, what else do we have here? I have a Swamphead Brewery out of Gainesville, Florida. This is Midnight Oil. It is an oatmeal coffee stout ale with coffee added. It's 5%. That might be on the edge. You might not be able to see that very well. I have a lot of beer here. You couldn't tell. This one is Bold City Brewery out of Jacksonville, Florida, and it is Mad Manatee India Pale Ale, Jacksonville, Florida. And then we got the big one right here. This is Freaky Freaky Deaky Dutch, which is a Berliner Weiss with cranberry, chipotle, and maple out of from Hidden Springs Ale Works, and I believe they are Tampa, Florida. So I had a, another one of. Um, Hidden Springs Ale Works beers, it was called ZFG, which is zero Fs given. That was actually pretty good. It was a pale ale, but it was really nice and light. had a really good taste to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into these. Uh, if you guys have any that you'd like me to do, you know, in a particular order or one that catches your eye, otherwise I'm just going to start here on the left and work my way to the my left and work my way to my right. Uh, it's probably the opposite for you. So I have a lot of these real small glasses here. And, uh... I only have six small glasses, so I have a few kind of bigger glasses. Like I said, I'm not gonna, I don't plan on trying to finish all these. That would be a really mess, uh, mess of a stream, and I don't think I have that much time. I don't think my battery on this camera will last that long. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, Mad Manatee, which is an IPA. I'm gonna do as I traditionally do and hold it up so you can see it as I pour it. So 
So real nice golden coming out of there. Uh, again, this is Mad Man. I don't know how I'm going to manage this inventory here, but it's got a nice uh, citrus kind of scent, really kind of fragrant. It's got more of a citrus kind of malty bite to it, which I was expecting maybe a little bit more of a kind of a fruity taste out of how the beer smells. But that one's pretty good. It's It reminds me of um, a little bit lighter of a two-hearted. It's not super heavy. It's kind of get a little bit of the maltiness, but not a whole lot. This is a really interesting can. It's got a lot of stuff going on on it. Uh, this manatee holding a propeller and uh, has a whole lot of stuff in the background. Yeah, this one is... What's the percentage on this? I literally pulled these out of the fridge. I didn't really look at these much before I tried these. Um... Yeah, I don't know the ABV on this. I don't see it anywhere here. It just says that it's rad. I'm sure that it has an ABV on here somewhere, but we're going to move on. So next up, I'm going to check out this uh, Blueberry Wheat Ale, which sounded really interesting. Brew Bus Brewing. This is... Uh, let's see. Again, I don't see an ABV on this. That is the uh, the magic of live... YouTube, I guess, has a lot of stuff. This says it's the 2015 silver medal winner of the Great American Beer Fest um, for fruit wheat beer. So I'm going to try this one out. Does this have a date on it? This was in November, November 12th, 2018. So relatively new. I think with these kind of beers, you can kind of age them a little bit longer than you could an IPA. Obviously, an IPA, you want to do it as fresh as possible. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't let it wait too long because then some of that kind of hoppiness drops out. You get a little bit more of the maltiness kind of bubbles up. but And that might explain this uh, this manatee, the Bold City one. So let's go ahead and pour this. Wow, really light. Has kind of a really goldish kind of bluish hue to it. This really weird kind of hue pouring out of the can. That's, uh, you're my boy, Blue! And uh, let's get a nose on this one. Yeah, I can actually smell, it kind of smells like a creamy kind of blueberry scent. For being a November, it's a smell, it does smell a little oxidized, though. So let's give it a taste. Yeah, definitely blueberry in there. Really light. Um, really crisp really light really kind of almost like cream ale almost like a blueberry cream ale kind of taste again i do taste a little bit of oxidation on it, a tiny bit so i'm not I'm not sure why that would be uh these were pretty not temperature controlled as in like refrigerated for the whole time that i've had it for about a month uh but not in you know not sitting in the sahara which for cans it shouldn't really matter too much and that's a that's the thing i like that we're kind of moving into the can age so that we're not uh, really too worried about um, you know, with bottles, you have to, the light's a big factor for it. Temperature's a little bit more, uh, with cans, it shouldn't affect it so much, but this one kind of has a little bit of an off flavor to it. But besides that off flavor, I do taste a lot of the blueberry. I get a lot of the, um, a lot of the kind of, um, lighter taste of it. And Tyler here just said, I wonder if fruit lighter beers are popular in Florida because of the heat. I would say probably lighter beers in general. I didn't see a whole lot of stouts, a whole lot of porters, but I don't know. I think those are traditional styles, so that might that might be part of it. So this is J-Dub. I don't know if I mentioned before, this is passion wheat, which is passion fruit and mango wheat. This, uh, wow, this is really old. And I didn't look at this before I bought it. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> It said Best Buy May, and then it says 22, 19, 17, 17. So I thought, like, I'm like, 2017? What the what the hell's going on? No, this is it says Best Buy May 22nd, 2019. So that makes me feel a little bit better. I'm, I'm willing to crack this one open. This is a wheat ale with flavors of passion fruit and mango. This beer is, oh, yeah, okay. If you marry a high-quality wheat ale with flavors of passion fruit and mango, this is the beer. This beer is what you'll get. No matter the occasion, this beer won't disappoint. At J-Dubs, our passion is beer. Enjoy your passion as you enjoy yours. So this is a really kind of tropical-looking can. 
it was kind of the kind of got that you know early 80s late 70s kind of florida vibe to it we could bring some florida here it's what about 16 13 degrees outside right now so pouring this again really light wow this is probably the lightest of the bunch this is really close to being like a pilsner almost but this is a wheat so we're gonna set this one right up there let's put a nose on it yeah it's got a whole lot of mango smell to it for sure it's got a really kind of interesting smell i don't think i've smelled something that kind of strong mango before it's definitely a really nice kind of change of pace let's get a let's get a taste of this one It's almost got this hint of a vanilla taste to it as like it kind of dance, you know, kind of rolls over your tongue. You don't get a whole lot of flavor except for this kind of vanilla quality to it. Definitely has a lot of mango. It has kind of this almost biting passion fruit kind of taste to it too. Which I have to say coming from, what was the last passion fruit? Oh, Larry's latest was had passion fruit in it. This has more of a kind of, I don't want to say real uh, passion fruit. I think Larry's latest had a more of a passion fruit kind of taste to it, like a real authentic kind of passion fruit. This one tastes like it's more of kind of like an unripened passion fruit. Mango and passion fruit, so it's kind of an odd taste, but not too bad. This is pretty refreshing. What is the percentage on this one? This one is 4.2%. Heavy hitter. Really heavy. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, where are my glasses here? Okay, let's go to the... This is two Henry's Brewing Company out of Clearwater. If you ever go to Orlando, I usually go to Florida every couple years. Woo, excuse me. I go to Florida every couple years to go uh, to spring training. So I'll go see the Tigers play or I'll see other teams play. And I just kind of like to go down there. When you drive, I've driven this drive quite a bit from Orlando to Tampa. You see billboards for this place quite a bit. Again, it's two Henry's Brewing Company, Blueberry Vanilla Wheat. This is uh, obviously 12 ounces. This is a 5.3 percent alcohol by volume uh there it says actually okay so on the front oh maybe it says bellevue uh biltmore in clearwater florida they are out of plant city florida so again you will see uh you will see dust in this video you will see billboards for this place all along the side of the road i started noticing it and we didn't have any clue where this place was when i saw actually um in january that I could pick this up in a store. I was kind of surprised. Like, oh, that's the place I always see uh, on the billboards driving down the expressway. So let's pour this. Again, really light. Uh, again, it's a blueberry wheat. So not expecting it to be super, uh, super dark or anything. It says on the back, name for historic hotel. Oh, what is this? Maybe this is called, I don't even know what this is called. Blueberry vanilla wheat. So I don't know why it says, oh, okay. It's giving me history on the Belleville Biltmore Resort. Oh, wow. I smell a lot more blueberry in this one than I smelled in this one. I kind of want to get a comparison smell out of here. Whoa. Uh, rousing uh, chat going on. But yeah, this is blueberry. It has a little bit more of a blueberry, kind of like a sweet blueberry, almost like a blueberry waffle kind of smell to it. Let's get a, let's get a taste here. Yeah, okay. I can taste big time vanilla. This is blueberry vanilla wheat. I get a lot of vanilla, a whole lot of vanilla out of this. The taste is very much, if I didn't mention it before, it's got vanilla. Um, I get vanilla really up front, and then on the tail, it's a little bit more of the, um, a little bit more of the blueberry. Almost kind of overwhelmingly sweet. That vanilla is just almost too overpowering. The, the blueberries in there, again, there's not, if there's a date on here, I don't think that's what that is. But it's really kind of, um, it's art, it tastes very artificial blueberry, but the vanilla is so strong that you don't really kind of notice that the vanilla, or I'm sorry, that the blueberry's in there. Uh, it's just really overly sweet. So next up is this Darwin, circa 1926 Tangerine Wheat Ale. This is 5.2% alcohol by volume. And I'm going to have another small glass. I guess I'm going to be saving my big glasses for the stouts. And uh, this last uh, 
Hidden Springs. So this is from Bradenton, California. Again, that's where the Pittsburgh Pirates, um, one of their minor league teams, play. Uh, has a government warning on it. Florida tangerine, citra hops, and coriander combined in this crisp, uh, crisp American wheat ale. Not overly sweet or sugary. This is a balanced warm weather beer. Ideal for the beach or the boat. Brewed for pork tacos, fish, ceviches, salad, seared chicken, and fresh fruit. DarwinBrewingCo.com uh, Yeah. And it says I can get a 10 cent deposit, so that's always good. Getting a lot of kind of crud in the top of these cans, which I don't want to get in my glass, and more so in my mouth. So let's go ahead and crack this one. No date on this one, but it's a wheat ale again, uh, as said by this J-Dubs one. It has a little bit more of a shelf life. Let's go ahead and pour this. Again, very light. I should have named this the Wheat Ales of Florida because it seems like everything I picked up was a wheat ale. So I'm going to scooch these on over. I'm going to move that one over. I'm going to move this two Henry's over with the glass. Give you a gateway to my soul here right in the middle. 1926. Again, it smells kind of oxidized. I guess I'm getting a bit of a citrus smell, but it smells so oxidized that I'm not really getting anything but that smell. But all in the name for you guys, I'll drink it. It's very light. Good carbonation, good head. Not too bad. So let's go ahead and take a taste. It does have actually, it has a pretty good tangerine, really light, kind of thin tangerine taste to it. 5.2% uh, alcohol. Again, this is they say it's a summer beer. Hopefully this wasn't brewed in the summer, um, or at least last year before the summer, for the summer. Yeah, really light, kind of like a lawnmower beer. I'm getting, uh, again, I'm, I'm getting a big oxidation scent out of it, but I'm not getting such an oxidized taste. Good point by Tyler at Review the Brew. He says he bets the wheat ale show more oxidation because there aren't as many hops and malts to hide it. And he is a scientist, so he says it right there. Scientific fact, not a theory. So you gotta, you know, what he says you gotta believe because he's a scientist. So let's move along. That was Darwin Brewing Company, 1926, circa 1926 Tangerine Wheat Ale. kind of trying to get through these and then I'll maybe come back to the ones that I really enjoyed quite a bit um, after I burp. So this is raspberry, let's switch positions here. This is raspberry Whitfinet from Infinite Ale Works, a Belgian style wit beer, which is out of Ocala, Florida. This is 5.5%, so top in the scales, 5.5%. And um, I feel like I've heard of Infinite Ale Works before. It might just be, their logo is pretty cool. It's like an in infinity sign with a tap handle. And it might just be because it just sounds kind of like a name, you know, like something you should have heard of. Uh, I got to tell you, you know, doing all these Michigan beers, I've pretty much lost sight of anything that's not a huge national brand because... You know, somebody like, oh, did you try such and such from so and so? And I, what is that? I don't know. I'm just drinking, I'm almost exclusively drinking Michigan beer at this point. That's how far down the rabbit hole I have gone. Wow, this one actually has a good raspberry scent. I'm kind of looking for, forward to the change of pace. Maybe this raspberry one, the color will be a little bit different. And I'm hoping I get a little bit more of a change of taste. Not so much of the citrus kind of blue or blueberry kind of kind of taste. Let's pour this. Yeah, it's got a nice pink kind of color to it. Pretty good carbonation there. That is Raspberry Whitfinet. And um, for the life of me, I can't remember what the difference is between a wit beer and a Weiss. I think there is a difference, but I can't, I can't remember what it is. It has something to do with the ingredients. Somebody correct me in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, big raspberry scent. I haven't had this smell this much raspberry since Blushing Monk, to be perfectly honest, in a beer. Good carbonation hanging around there. Not any oxidation scent at all. This is uh, 
Okay, September 5th, 2018. Not the freshest, but it, ha it's, it seems like it's held up pretty good. Let's get a taste. Actually got a really good raspberry flavor on that. It's a little, it's obviously, it's a whipped beer, so it's a little bit on the thinner side, but it has a lot of raspberry taste, a lot more, uh, it's, it tastes a lot more natural than the blueberries of these beers have. I think this, um, You're My Boy Blue from Brewbus, this has blueberry, and it's probably the closest of these two blueberries that I've had that has a blueberry, a real kind of blueberry taste. This raspberry, though, tastes really good. It's just got a nice kind of bready quality to it. Uh, thin, a little bit on the thinner side, taste-wise. It's not super, like, thick like a Rubeus or, like I said before, Blushing Monk, obviously. But for being these low ABV, again, 5.5%, it's got a really good taste to it. And this is one that, so far, I have to kind of tip my, tip my hand here and tell you, this has been my favorite of these ones so far. Uh, it just has a really good taste and a lot of taste, too. Scooch that over. And we're going to move on to the big boy glasses here because that's what I have left. I don't think I've ever tried nine beers in a sitting. And usually if I, I do, I'm not doing so well afterwards. Uh, Weiss is German and Wit is Belgian. Both wheats. Different versions of the wheat beer regional ingredients. See? This guy knows what he's talking about. So this is... And the yeast. Jeez. You guys are... Helping me out. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So this is another J-Dubs Brewing Company out of Sarasota, Florida. This is Bell Cow uh, Milk Chocolate Porter. 5.6% by volume. Can you believe it? They're only getting stronger. And I have a feeling... Oh, okay. Never mind. This coffee stout. I'm looking out of the corner of my eye. It's 5%. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is 5.6% alcohol by volume. Brewed and canned by J-Dubs Brewing Company. Again, this is out of Sarasota, Florida. So let's go ahead and crack this one open. Is there a date on this? Probably should have looked at it first. Best Buy, June 29th, 2019. It has the time. So if you drink it after 5.53 on June 29th, 2019, it is not good anymore. That's the, that's the demarcation line. So let's go ahead and pour this. Wow, really dark. This is a porter. kind of fill that glass up really nice got a really nice smell to it actually too a lot of chocolate smells really good that's a really nice head nice kind of brownish a little darker than khaki color again a whole lot of chocolate cody m the wise and yeast gives the white spirit subtle, sweet, and fruity character. You won't get this banana flavor in a wit beer, which is more likely to contain citrus and coriander. Thank you. So let's taste this. I'm, this this smells the best. I mean, I really like the raspberry, the um, wherever I put it, the infinite ale works raspberry smelled really good. Wow, that is okay. Milk chocolate porter. That is really, really good. You know, all those people that say don't drink dark beers in the summer. I think the porter is like the perfect summer dark beer because it's not too heavy. Usually they're not super high ABV. You can kind of get them around this 5%, 5.6% range. They have a nice kind of mouthfeel. It's not too heavy, not too thick. This one is really good. Getting that smoky, kind of roasty, barley taste, but also getting a lot of that chocolate, a lot of that kind of milky, chocolatey, creamy kind of taste. It's it's a little bit lighter of a mouthfeel. It's not heavy. It's not sticky. Uh, just like I like in a porter to be nice and light with a lot of flavor. I'm going to finish this whole can before I can get to the next one. All right, so let's move this down. Maybe move this one back, make some room here. All right, next up, Swamphead Brewery Midnight Oil Oatmeal Coffee Stout. This is the first and only stout that I have right now. Uh, this is an oatmeal coffee stout ale with coffee added. All 
I'm reading the com sorry guys, I'm reading the chat. Cameron uh, Cam says when it's freezing outside like it is now, he's all into the all in the mood for KBS and French toast devil dog. I agree. Dustin says pour that one over ice cream. That <laughs> that would probably be really good actually. I'm not usually too into the whole beer and ice cream thing, but that that tastes really good. Um, maybe a vanilla ice cream or something. So this says Swamphead Brewery Oatmeal Coffee Stout. This is a 5%, as I mentioned before. This is brewed and canned by Swamphead Brewery in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, Swamphead.com. Uh, what does it say here? Quiet and sensual. Ooh, quiet and sensual, like a moonlit night. This complex blend of toasted oats, roasted barley, chocolate, wheat, malt, and dark roast coffee imparts an intense aroma and complex flavor. Profile. We brew a traditional English-style oatmeal stout with a rich malt profile, then add locally roasted coffee while this ale is cold conditioned. Hey, they have the ingredients on here, and it's before Bud Light did it. It says ingredients, malt, wheat, oats, yeast, water, fair trade coffee, and hops. And I think that's a common misconception that people think that these darker beers don't have uh, hops in them. I mean, you know, they do. So this is, there is a date, uh, you'll probably won't be able to see this at all. It is just smashed. It says best something something 19. So it's this year, so that's good. And they have a package date, and it was October. I'm sorry, um, the 11th month, November. So it should be relatively fresh and decent. Backwoods Bastard and Boss Tweed. Wow. That sounds like a good combination. This has a really slight kind of coffee scent to it. Let's pour this. So this is a coffee stout. Head's a little bit, looks to be a little bit darker than the um, J-Dub one. Pour that pretty aggressively. The head is pretty small for being uh, poured that hard. Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. Not a bad choice. So this, um, so this is the stout, and this is the porter. The stout looks a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. This one actually smells oxidized, too. Has a little bit of that kind of rusty, tin canny kind of smell to it. Yeah, not getting, not getting a whole lot of coffee out of there, unfortunately. So let's give it a taste. Okay, getting roasty. Wow. Okay, so getting kind of a, getting a true coffee kind of taste, not the imagined coffee taste that a lot of beers say, oh, it has coffee in it. And you kind of get this hint of coffee, like this dark kind of roasty taste, which, you know, could be a couple other things. This has like a coffee, coffee taste to it. 5% doesn't carry much body. It's kind of on the thinner side. Um, the coffee mixes in with this. It does have a roasty kind of malty barley kind of taste to it as well, but it mixes in. I can tell that there's some kind of, with that coffee, it has kind of like an oxidized taste to it, a, a tiny tinge of it. I'm sorry, Polly B. I can't make your wife come back. Yeah, this has that coffee taste to it. It has that malty, roasty kind of taste to it as well. Not a huge fan. I I think 5% is kind of a little low for a stout to be really effective. And I don't mean effective being like to get you drunk. But I mean effective to kind of give you a little bit more of that kind of stouty taste, right? When you open a stout and it's 5%, it's kind of like, that's cool. I mean, but if it's going to be 5%, it needs to really wow you, excuse me, with a lot of taste, with some kind of body. This has a decent coffee. I think it's got a really kind of natural coffee taste to it, but it doesn't have uh, a whole lot more than that. John Martin Brockway, thank you for the, for the compliments on the beard. So this is Freaky Deaky Dutch, which is a total change of pace. This is a Berliner Weiss with cranberry, chipotle, and maple. One pint, uh, 5% Hidden Springs Ale Works. And they are out of, what did I say? They are out of Tampa, Florida. And this is, the, so the ZFG, the zero Fs given, had a really similar 
uh, can design than this, it or to this. It had a, like a lot of hand-drawn stuff on it. Uh, check out my Instagram. I have a picture of it. It was right around the new year. And this is by uh, a local artist. I want to say Ariel uh, Katarina did the artwork on this. And the artwork on the ZFG is really similar to this. I think that the art style on this is really cool. If you've watched the videos for a while. If you haven't, you should watch a bunch of them. Just because then you'd be super cool like me. Um, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I really dig artwork. I really dig design. I think that artwork plays a lot into uh, beer that we drink. A lot of people might say, oh, it's, well, you know, it's just the artwork, whatever, man. It's about the beer. It is about the beer, but what's the first thing that catches your eye? It's going to be the artwork. So, with that being said, I have two of these. One under the counter here. Uh, saving it for a rainy day. Wow. I actually smell the cranberry... Uh, and I do smell a little bit like a spicy kind of note to it. So let's go ahead and pour this. Look at that. Really nice, really pink, really light colored. Not thick, not too hazy. Nice kind of carbonation there. Let's see, can we fit the whole can in there? Yes, we can. That is a beautiful color. Again, that is Freaky Deaky Dutch. Has this Buddha looking dude. It says, I love gold. I know who it is. And he has some gold bars, but it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward 100% to the Chipotle that's in this because I'm not a super huge fan of spicy beer. Uh, I think spicy beer is kind of spicy, gives me heartburn, so. But it has like, so it says cranberry, Chipotle, and maple. I actually smell that in here i smell the cranberry i smell the chipotle has this bit of a spicy kind of note to it and i smell the maple on the tail end the the cranberry is kind of light on the top but it's got a really good really good uh smell let's go ahead and try it out cheers oh my gosh so trying all these wheat ales really light uh light on the taste you know they have good qualities to them so i was going to take a sip of this thinking oh i'm still drinking uh wheat ales not drinking um a berliner weiss and i try this oh my gosh this yeah this kind of was a little bit of a surprise so it's i can tell strange mix absolution absolute absolution Absolutely. I'll get back to the chat in a second here. So, you can taste the cranberry. Current, bleh, the cranberry adds to the bitterness right up front. And it's a Berliner Weiss, so it's a little bit sour as it is. It's got this really lemony, zesty, strong lemon juice kind of taste on the tail end. But it also, at the beginning, you get that little hint of cranberry. Just enough. There's a little spicy note of it, or to it of the Chipotle and then you get that you get the maple man I can barely talk you get the maple and then it's just overpowered by the super sour um, lemony Chipotle spicy kind of wrote like smoky spiciness Wow Wow I'm not I'm just kind of getting into sours. Sours haven't always been my deal. But I'm just kind of slowly... They're, they're super popular, so I'm kind of slowly trying more and more of them. Wow, this is just... Pretty amazing. I mean, it's not everybody's bag, I don't think. I love lemons. I love when you get a lemon in your iced tea or something, and I love just eating a lemon. Wow. Oh my gosh, that is just... Absolutely, incredibly not what I was expecting when I read cranberry, chipotle, maple. So let's do this. Totally different styles. These three beers. These are my top three. Let me put the, the cans in front of the beer. Whoa, almost spilled that one. So if I were to go a top three right now, these would be my top three. So, Infinite Ale Works. Is that correct? Yes, Infinite Ale Works. J-Dubs Brewing Company. Milk Chocolate Porter. 
and Hidden Springs. Hidden Springs Ale Works, Freaky Deaky Dutch. Top three right here of the Florida beers that I brought home. I brought, uh, I'm sorry to hear about your wife, Polly. So the thing, yeah, so you threw me off my train of thought here. So yeah, these were the top three, just trying these right now. Um, and they're all super different. So it's hard to say, like, if I were to pick, I thought, I think I brought nine. I brought a total of 12 home, but there were two duplicates. So that leaves me with, that should leave me with 10 but my math isn't so good. So I'm going to say nine because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine beers here. Uh, and the rest are, I must've only had 11. So anyways, top three in no specific order, J-Dub, Milk Chocolate Porter, Hidden Springs Ale Works, Freaky Deaky Dutch, and Infinite Ale Works, Raspberry Whitfinet. And I just want to try all these, all three of these. Man, this this reminds me of um, like a sweet hot chocolate, but not hot. It's got so much chocolate taste. It's nice and sweet. Really, the the milk chocolate porter. They should just call this instead of bell cow. It should just be J Dub's milk chocolate porter, and that's all I should call it because this tastes like milk chocolate and a porter. You get that roasty barley in there. Perfect. Raspberry Whitfinet. Got a nice kind of raspberry taste, a little perfumey. Uh, you get the nice, clean kind of wit beer kind of taste to the whole thing. It's got a really nice raspberry taste. A little bit, you know, it's not overpoweringly, not overpowering, not uh, overpoweringly sweet. It's it's just a nice raspberry taste through and through. It tastes really natural. And then, of course, we have uh, Freaky Deaky Dutch by Hidden, Ale, Hidden Springs Ale Works. I swear. Too many words in that. And that's just a punch in your tongue. You know, you get the you get the raspberry, you get the chipotle, you get the maple. They're all mixed in really well. And they're just, uh, yeah, it's just a really good combination. You wouldn't think if you read the label that it would work out uh, really well. But when you try it out, it's just, it's just totally different. I don't think I've ever had anything that tasted that kind of different than everything before. I'm a little disappointed, um, unfortunately, that a lot of these were kind of oxidized. They had an oxidized taste. They had an oxidized, some of them had oxidized flavor. Obviously not the thing that you really, you know, are looking forward to. And I don't know which beer is which at this point because I've moved them and shuffled them all around. That would be a really good video to say, like, hey, I just poured all these. Which is which? And I think if I had an honorable mention, it'd be, uh, you're my boy, Blue, by Brewbus brewing out of Tampa, Florida. So that's it. Uh, I don't have much else. What? Okay. So I'm into the Q and a part of it. So if you have any questions, just kind of, kind of push them out into this, into the chat here, and I'll try to answer to my best ability at this point. So John Martin Brockway asked what Michigan beer is underrated, underrated. John Draper said about 90%. Um, that's true. I would say underrated. That's a really good question. I, it makes you think like breweries that aren't really well known that distribute that I go places and I see it on the shelf and I'm like, why is that still sitting on the shelf? That's such a good beer. Um, man. Underrated beer. Let me think about that because that's a, that's a tough question. Okay. Uh, Dustin Cagle, would you, would like to see beers of Indiana live stream from you? So there's a, a Indiana um, brew tuber, whatever you want to call it, beer reviewer, uh, Steve from Yala TV. He does a lot of Indiana beers. He does a lot of beers in general. Uh, he's in, I want to say he's like north central Indiana. And he sent me, I'm looking at him right now. I have a whole bunch of beer here. It's not chilled. But I'm trying to work my way through some of them. And some of these might be a little too old. He sent me these, but, you know, I have, like, um, Hamilton Porter by Bru Burnham Brewing. I don't know where they're out of. They're probably not even in Indiana at this point. I'll just look, and it'll be like, yeah. So I, I have actually some beer, but I don't have a big lifeline into 
um, a big or a big, you know, person or something I can get beer from Indiana from. So it's I'm in West. I'm sorry, East Michigan. So it's a little bit of a hike for me to get to Indiana. Um, but yeah, if I could get like Sun King or if I could get obviously Three Floyds is huge out of Indiana. If I could get any of that stuff, I'd do it. I have some Three Floyd stuff. I have Upland. That's I can get Upland here, Central State. Um, I can get that stuff here, but that's kind of like, I don't know. I feel like that might be run of the mill. Um, I have some Three Floyds here and it's Gumball Head, but it's kind of old. So I don't really want to do that as a review. I like to try stuff as fresh as possible. Uh, shotgun, uh, Jonathan Downing says shot one for the culture before I go. I'm not going yet, so I can't do that. I have all this beer here. I don't want to waste this. Uh, Cameron says most, um, yeah, so underrated. He says most Griffin Claw beers, especially Hayes Force. So I did a review on Hayes Force and I talked to the marketing director at Hayes, For Hayes Force, which I've talked to, I've talked to him quite a bit. Um, and the Hayes Force that I reviewed, he said was like the first iteration and they knew, like, what I said about it was exactly what they kind of thought, and they've kind of changed it since then. So maybe I should go back and do Hayes Force. Uh, Cameron Cam also says Idiom. Uh, Samir says, have you ever tried Hetty Topper? I have not tried Hetty Topper. That's one that I, I haven't. I mean, the whole reason I started this channel, I started it uh, and centered it around Michigan beer, is because stuff like Hetty, Alchemist stuff, you know, Treehouse stuff, um... Monkish, I always go back to Monkish, Three Floyds, not, maybe not Three Floyds as much, but um, uh, Hoofhearted, places like that that are around this area. Well, those aren't necessarily all around this area, but it's hard to get. I don't like to trade. I don't like to go to the post office. I don't like to go to UPS. <laughs> I'm really like lazy like that. I'd rather get teeth, like I'd rather go to the dentist and get a filling than go to the post office or UPS to ship beer. Uh, I've had beer like seized before, so you have to trade to get that kind of stuff. So I want to do Michigan because I can get Michigan stuff fairly easily, and um, you know we have so many good beer, so many good breweries, so many good, so much good beer here. There's like 300 plus breweries in Michigan. Uh, the you know I really wanted to try and visit a lot of them. I wanted to take the show on the road and do that. So that's kind of my next step is to go out to more places and live stream or maybe interview brewers and maybe just try flights at, at breweries and be able to film it and people be cool with that. Uh, Cam says, most anticipated beer of 2019. Ah, uh, geez. 2019. I don't... I, I, I... So early 2019, I was going to say I don't really keep up with this stuff. I kind of do. If it's a big brewery, I really keep up with some of it. Like if it's a Bells or if it's Founders, obviously. Some of the really big videos that I've done have been like, you know, all the Barrel Age stuff. KBS is always... is probably the biggest one. Uh, CBS is relatively big, but the one I'm looking forward to the most right now is uh, Official by Bell. So it's a New England style. It's their first like widely distributed uh, New England style um, IPA. It is, uh, they did the Side Yard, which is a harvest kind of thing. It was a one-off that they did out of the general store. You had to go to Kalamazoo or to Comstock or whatever to go and get that. And I did get a can of that from a viewer, um, but that is probably the one I'm looking forward to the most just because the New England style is changing, you know, so it's changing. There's different kind of varieties of it now. I drank and I tried a lot of New England's. I feel like I'm kind of like, a, def I don't know. I, I don't want to call myself an expert, but I, I've had so many at this point that it's like, I know which kind I like and I know uh, what I don't really like in a New England, but there's still... They're still pretty good. So I'm really looking forward to official from Bells. That's my probably most 2019, uh, 2019 most looked forward to beer, if that's even a sentence. Uh, Dustin says he recommends bare hands. Cam says, geez, Cam, you're asking a lot of questions. Uh, bucket list. So I would love to try Hetty Topper. I'd love to try Pliny. I'd love to try, um, again, some of the monkish stuff, some of the treehouse stuff. I have tried some of the treehouse stuff. Um, I want to go to Asheville and try a lot of the breweries around there. I don't really have a bucket list per se of stuff that I want to try. Oh, okay. So if I have a bucket list, it would be the, um, the different stuff out of transient, the stuff that's, if I had a trans, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, a distributed bucket list, I'd say probably transient stouts. I have a Buckley, but I haven't tried like Kentucky. I haven't tried Juni. I haven't tried some of the ones, um, that they distribute like that. 
Um, one that I really enjoyed was drafting tables. I want to say it's mean vanilla bean on rye barrels. That was, that was, I had that at the fall beer fest in, um, Eastern market. And that's probably one of the best stouts I've ever had. So if they were to bottle that and I could get my hands on it, I would love to bring a video of that. Um, if you're in the East Lansing area in the near future, live stream it. I might just do that, John. Um, Tyler review the brew was on earlier. He lives in, like, I don't know if it's Lansing proper or if it's considered East Lansing. Him and I might do something like Ellison or something like that if we can arrange it. Uh, and, yes, there are a lot of um, breweries in East Lansing. So, and, he, and John laughed at my de facto New England-style IPA expert. I've had so many. If you, look at the play, if you look at the channel, there's a playlist, and it's all the New England styles. And I guess I'm kind of fudging some of it with some kind of East Coast but uh, yeah, I've done, I've had so many different New England style IPAs that, you know, if they were to like, if there was like a trial and they said, hey, we need somebody that's tried a lot of New England style IPAs, I could probably do that because I've had a lot of them. And I went to, uh, and I had some stuff from Trillium. I did a video on that. That's like one of my few out of state beers that I tried. I went, I was in Boston last april late march early april and had one of those so just trying these around if there's any other questions i'll kind of give you guys a second i'll have a little drink of these and i'll answer a little bit more questions and uh and then we'll get into it all right so samir asked have you tried cart horse by old nation my my local meyer had some and i was debating so yeah i had old nation uh Card Horse, when it was called Boxer, I have a review of that. It's the same beer. Boxer is the same thing as Card Horse. They had some kind of like naming issue or some kind of trademark thing. I think there was a beer that had like or a, a brewery or something that had that name and they had to change the name for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I really, I liked it. I like, I think, what is it? So it's Card Horse, Boss Tweed, uh, M43, Greenstone. Is there one other? Me, my, I never had that. That's the only one I haven't had. And um, Full Earth. And they all have their merits. And they're all just, they're just a little bit different. They all have really similar tastes and they're all a little bit different. I think that uh, Card Horse is a little bit on the lighter end of it. I like Greenstone a lot. It has this kind of limey kind of taste to it. And I don't mean like the English kind of limey thing. It has like this, a little, it has this really weird lime taste. And that's Greenstone. Uh, but yeah, if you like any of the Old Nation stuff, it's going to be really similar because they all have kind of similar qualities. They have like this common thread. Uh, but Boxer, I'm sorry, Card Horse, a.k.a. Boxer, it's a really good beer. I mean, it's it's I think it's a lower ABV kind of on that edge or maybe Greenstone's a lower one, but that's a really good one. Um, Cam, if you're ever in Grand Rapids... Pliny was on his bucket list. Jonathan Downing, have I ever done cocaine? I have not. John Draper, Full Earth. Cam, Full Earth. Polly, whose wife left him, asks, what's my favorite beer under $1.50? There's actually a lot of stuff. I know that you're joking, but there's a lot of stuff that's a dollar, that's under $1.50 if you buy singles. Um, that's good. So some places that I go, I've seen um, River's Edge, which is in Milford. I've seen some of their beer for like $1.50. And they all have pretty good. Uh, sorry, Stone Cold Dave. I don't. I don't drink many Asian beers unless I go to like uh, Benihana. Stop your roommates from siphoning your beer. I think you have to put like a decoy, and you have to put something like something that you wouldn't want somebody to drink, like vinegar or some kind of like laxative laden beer. All right, so I'm coming up on almost an hour. I'll stay on for a few more minutes. I got six people watching. That's pretty impressive. If you missed it, top three. J-Dubs, Bell Cow, Milk Chocolate Porter from Sarasota, Florida. Infinite Ale Works. Raspberry Whitfinet, Belgian style wit beer, out of Ocala, Florida. 
and last but not least, Freaky Deaky Dutch by Hidden Springs Ale Works, 5%. These are all really low ABV. 5.6, I believe, 5%, and 5.5. So, you can drink a few of these. Robert. Robert Santana in to save the day. What is your favorite Belgian? Wow. I gotta say, I haven't had a whole lot of Belgians. Um, I'd almost just be throwing out a name, to be honest. If I said, like, what my favorite Belgian was, I'd just probably throw a name out there. Because right now, at this point, I don't, I don't really, I can't really think of what I've had that's Belgian. Um, yeah. Sorry, you came on, you had a question, I don't have anything, I don't have anything to say. Trapped on a desert island, could have one beer and one flavor of chicken wing before you died. Man, I'd just go with, like, if I went by Buffalo B-dubs, Buffalo Wild Wings sauces, it'd be hot sauce. That would be my favorite. I'm not, like, I like hot food, I like spicy food, but I don't like blazing. That's just too much. That's just kind of, like, excessive, to be excessive. And beer, I don't know, I'd probably just go with a two-hearted or something. That's a good, that's a good beer to go with. I mean, that's got a, that's, like, my favorite kind of just everywhere beer. So if you just went to a store, in Michigan at least, and you were looking for beer, I'd say Two Hearted is probably like my favorite go-to beer that you can get. You know it's going to be the same all the time. It's consistently good. It's like, what, seven point something, probably higher than that. So drink a couple, get, get drunk. So, you know, that's the worst last thing that you could do. Uh, let's see. John asks, how often are you going to be doing live streams? Probably one, I try to do it once a month. I had to take a little bit of a break November and December because I got sick in November. It was the end of the month. December just didn't have time with all the holidays. Probably about once a, once a month. Uh, and John says, final absolution, Dragon Meat. I do like Dragon Meat a lot. I've gone there a few times. It was before I started this. Favorite bourbon barrel aged beer? Um, probably just have to go with the old standby. KBS is a really good uh, BBA. I like bourbon barrel aged stouts. I'm not really big into bourbon barrel aged uh, IPAs. I'm not really big into bourbon barrel aged. I like tequila barrel aged stuff. That's good. When you have tequila barrel aged and it's good. Oh, there we go. Robert says Dragon Meat Armageddon Grand Cru. I love Grand Cru's. I should have I should have said Grand Cru's. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see. So, favorite seasonal beer. Seasonal as in a beer that you're supposed to drink during the season or a, a beer that's released in like a limited time during a specific season? It's two different things. Uh, did OJ do it? Yes, he probably did. Love your videos. I've been introduced to a ton of new beer thanks to you. Hey, Mr. Favorable Saucer. saucer. That's why I'm here. Um, I love bringing this kind of beer to, to everybody. I love, you know, bringing breweries that you might not have tried or you might see it on the shelf. And you're like, should I spend the money to buy that? If you could go to a place that sells singles, that's awesome. But a lot of places don't do that. So I like to try and bring beer to the channel that maybe is kind of underserved or people haven't heard of before. So I like to bring that, show it to you guys, let you guys see what it's like. And hopefully if you kind of align with the taste that I like after a while, you kind of can figure out if you like a beer or not. Uh, okay. Uh, bourbon barrel aged expedition stout. I need to try it. I have another bottle of that. I need to try it. It's been a few months since it came out. Can you get non-alcohol beers at Oktoberfest or is that sacrilegious? I don't know. I don't, what's a good like non-alcoholic beer? Um, somebody just did one. I can't remember who it was though. I mean, that's all that, uh, there's some brewery. That's like all they do. Uh, do do I think Doom? Oh, I thought you meant the game Doom. Um, I don't think so. I don't think they're going to do Doom this year. I mean, they could. A lot of people love it. Um, I actually I still have some around here somewhere. Uh, and I thought it was that was actually okay. I wasn't super disappointed in that one. A lot of people don't like bourbon barrel aged IPAs. Like I said earlier, I'm not a huge fan of them. If they're done really well, I, I like it. I like bourbon barrel aged malt liquors a little bit better. Canadian Tuxedo cult, Cultural appropriation that's easy for me to say um i don't know i don't know canadian culture i'm, I'm not gonna that's all i'm gonna say i don't want to get myself in trouble 
Limited release. So limited release seasonal beer. You know, I really like the Larry's latest series. That's a limited release. It's a seasonal beer. Unfortunately, it's released in the wrong season. It should be released in the summer. It's released in the winter. Uh, or early, well, I guess January is considered winter. Um, right? Last I checked. I looked at the Gregorian calendar. It was winter. Yeah, I mean, that would be one that I think should be released in the summer. And I like that one a lot. But because it's the winter, you know, you don't really want to drink a bunch of really light, easy drinking, refreshing sours after you've been just uh, shoveling your driveway or whatever. So, um, but yeah, that'd be my favorite seasonal released on the off season. How long am I, have I been growing my beard for? Is it time for a trim? It's always a time for a trim. Um, I've been growing this since August of 2017. So if you look at some of my earlier videos, I don't have it. And it's grown, grown out since then. Uh, I've trimmed it a few times. I trim the sides because this starts to get like really crazy. And I don't like the way that it feels against my collar if I don't trim it. Uh, Robert asked, Trappist beers. I've only had one Trappist that I can remember, and I didn't like it. But it might have been old. Uh, let's see. Never trim it. Okay. <laughs> Am I subscribed to PewDiePie? No, I'm not su subscribed to T-Series or whatever that other one is either. Um, Chimay Grand Reserve. That's a good one. Loving Blushing Monk. I like that one. If you can trim it, can you have it? If I, if, if, John, if I trim it, I'll trim it on a live stream. Uh, and I will not trim it because I trim it like somewhat regularly or I go to a barber shop and have them do it. But if I sh like cut a considerable amount, I will bag it and I will just mail it to you. Don't drop it at the scene of a crime, though, because that's just not cool. It's not a cool thing to do. So what let me ask you guys a question. You're asking me questions. What do you so there's a lot of there's this whole debate about Blushing Monk going on. That it's not like, oh, this isn't a beer, it's a wine cooler. Um, or, you know, just the kind of the, the talk about it not being a beer. What do you guys think about that? Blushing Monk, it's like a nine whatever percent beer. Where is it? It's over. It's someplace over here. I have a bottle. Nope. My blushing monk must be upstairs. So, okay, so Dustin asked... Dustin asked, what's my favorite, uh, or what's my Barrel Age Series beer I'd like founders to do? I wish that they would have done the Imperial Stout as a wide release instead of doing that Mothership Series... Uh, you know, a lot of people said, hey, did you get some? And I'm sure they just wanted to trade, but they said, hey, did you get this? No, I didn't get it. And the reason is, is because they let so many cases go out the door, but before, you know, it's just kind of like, it's ridiculous. They let so many go out the door before a lot of people can get it. It's going to go secondary. It's going to get sold. Uh, let's see. Chimay is Trappist. I don't know if I've ever had Chimay. I know that's kind of, that's kind of sacrilege right there, but I don't know if I've had it. Uh, if it gets you drunk, it's beer. That's what Sam says. Right on. Stone Cold Dave says, do I watch wrestling? I do not. I uh, used to a lot, um, but I haven't recently. I kind of hear about it, you know, like in the periphery, but I don't watch it. Not, I don't have anything against it. I just, that's not on my radar. Uh, Cam says, so this is to the, the blushing monk, he disagrees. Got everything a beer fanatic would love. Also letting the non-beer drinkers enjoy something new. His girlfriend loves it, and she hates beer. It's delicious. I totally agree. Anything that makes beer more accessible to people is a good beer. It does. And, and the other thing is, if you like a beer, regardless of what everybody else thinks, you know, that's, that's I'm going to pour that down the drain, whatever. It's a good beer. If you like it, it's good. That's all that matters. It's what you like. It's not what, about, what everybody else likes. Um... 
yeah, Imperial Stout got released as a mothership. So they released it out of the tap room. Again, they released like like Panther Cub. So Panther Cub was a mothership. This uh, donkey... MF Donkey Stout. This is the mothership series. This was the one from a few releases ago. Um, these get released only out of the tap room. And that's why they're mothership. So you have to go there. You have to pick it up. This one was not one that sold out. Uh, but Panther Cub and... Uh, FIS went, went sold out really quick. Favorite game of uh, Thrones character? There's so many really good ones. Uh, I haven't read the books. I've only watched the show, so I can't comment on what the books say. Uh, I mean, I like Jon Snow, but he's just, it's kind of like, I don't know, just... It's kind of hokey at this point. Like, yeah, I, I don't want to spoil it. Uh, aging any notable beers? I have a bunch that I'm intent unintentionally aging. Does that count? Um, I have a bunch that I have here that probably aren't any good anymore that I probably should have drank. Um, I've got stuff from just a couple years ago. Uh, let's see. Notable beers. Oh, you retracted your message, Pat. So I have this that I'm probably going to sit on for about a lifetime to see how this turns out. It's rye uh, barrel-aged Gorilla Juice from Ascension. This is a 19%. Imperial Stout brewed with vanilla bean and coffee and aged in rye whiskey barrels. I've got a lot of the Founders Bombers that are kind of aging. Um, again, not necessarily intentionally, but I don't drink bombers very often. Uh, favorite sour in Michigan. Hmm. If you're talking just sour sour, I think the one that I've liked the most, like kettle sour, has been Holmes uh, Guava. Um, guava Sherbet. Most expensive beer I've bought... Um, most expensive beer I've bought. I bought Tank Bender in the in the um, gift box. I haven't tried it. That was pro with the glasses and everything. I think it was like forty or fifty bucks. Um, I'm not going to answer who's the worst person. Next live stream should be drinking old beer that I've let sit intention unintentionally. What's up, DJ? Um, yeah, I could. Um, I. Uh, I could have a really rough time drinking a lot of old beer. Like, I could start dragging out old beer uh, right now. Actually, I, I've i gotten rid of a lot of old beer, so I have some stuff that's just kind of sitting here. How do I feel about hard soda? Um, I don't know. I don't really drink. I mean, that's kind of like... If you don't like beer, I guess it's good. I like beer, so I don't drink them. I don't know if I've ever actually even had a hard soda. Maybe the ginger ale one, um, one of those. Uh, Pat retracted because I answered it the way intended. So that's good. Good thing. We were mind-melding there. John asks, have I tried Sam Adams New England IPAs? Or is it IPS or IPAs? If it's IPAs, I have. I've tried um, uh, just the New England, the one in the yellowish kind of can. And I had, they have a... Uh, I went to Boston and I went to their uh, tap room or tasting room and did the tour and all that stuff. And I had one there. It was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't anything to write home about. But for being a mass produced, I'm really surprised. So New England styles, when they're when they're mass produced by big brewers, I'm really impressed with how good they are because a lot of you know a lot of the balance of how good a New England is is how well it. You have to have it fresh. So if you get one that's mass produced, like the Stone one, I thought was pretty good. The um, Fear Movie Lions, I thought was pretty good. When you have those and they get tr they get transported all around the country and they hold up pr pretty well, I'm always impressed with that. So I was impressed with the Sam Adams one. I thought that was pretty decent. Uh, let's see, White Claw, I have it in my fridge. I haven't tried it. Um, have I ever brewed my own beer? I have brewed my own beer. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a couple of years. Um, I, five gallons hard because I drink so much of this other stuff that it's, I don't want to sound like an alcoholic, but I, I drink enough of the other stuff.
that it's hard to go through all those all that beer five gallons of beer it's what like two and a half cases or whatever it's really hard to go through that i've thought about doing gallon beers i do have something kind of in the works that i want to show to you guys that has something to do with kind of has something to do with brewing beer so uh and favorite new holland beer i mean dragon's milk that's a good beer that's a good new holland All right, so I'm, I'm going to do one more minute because I've been on for an hour and nine minutes as of right now. So I'm going to do one more minute and then I got to go off because I got to pick this stuff up. So I'm going to answer Pittsburgh. Um, I can't think of specific Pittsburgh beer, so probably not. But if you want to send me some, shoot me an email. I would try it. I'd probably put it on the channel. 30 more seconds. <laughs> the dankest meme I know, I, I, I don't know. I'm old. I don't know that much stuff about memes. Thanks, John. Take it easy. Next month, I'll try it. John, I do my best. Robert, it's my pleasure. I love bringing beer like this to you guys. It's I think it's awesome. I think when everybody gets to try all these really great beers, or like I said, if you like what I like, then you'll like what I like, right? So uh, Cameron, Ascension beers. Yes, Ascension is great. Corporal punishment in schools. Maybe it should do it more. Maybe you should have stuff more. Maybe there should be more corporal punishment. I don't know. These kids are out of control. And Neo York just jumped in. I'm about to leave. I haven't had anything from Interboro. Spotted Cow, New Glarus. I have not tried Spotted Cow. I would love to try Spotted Cow. I would love to try New Glarus. I haven't had anything from New Glarus. So again, if anybody wants to send me any New Glarus, um, check out my uh, channel page. It has a, a, for business inquiries, my email address is right in there. So you can, you can click on that, send me an email. If you go to drafttherapy.com, uh, there's a contact us um, option in the menu at the top, hit contact us, contact me through that. Anything can happen. You never know. All right, Samir, keep watching. I'll keep bringing you new beer. I promise. All right, guys, I am going to watch this chat like a hawk for about 10 more seconds. How many Kentucky bourbon barrel ales should you drink? I mean, I don't want to be a proponent of alcoholism, but, you know, drink enough to, that you're, like, buzzed, but not that you're too drunk. And DJ, more streams, got here last minute. Sorry about that. Enough to make it to your bed without passing out. That's always a good thing. I mean, you know, and if you do make it, like, get close to your bed, just carry, like, a bottle of water, because that's really rough. Thank you, DJ. All right, guys, I'm going to call it a night. Enjoy your Friday. I'm leaving you time to watch your primetime shows on Friday if that's what people even do anymore other than watch Paul. You're welcome. Polly, you're welcome. If you watch TV or whatever anymore, I, do people even do that? Um, if not, you're probably watching me. So I'm going to give you the rest of your evening back to primetime TV. Maybe watch like 2020 or something tonight or Dateline. I don't know what's on Friday nights. I'm going to try and um, salvage whatever sobriety I've left and then... We'll see where, we'll see what happens from there. All right, guys and girls, if there are any, you didn't chat with on, with us, but you guys, again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Sean from Draft Therapy reminding you, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are. This time it happens to be in Florida, but hopefully, you know, whatever's around you. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching Draft Therapy. Cheers.